Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so, I just finished uh, watching Arrow Season 7, and I thought a really good video to do would be to rank every single season of Arrow, and uh, just talk about uh, what I think of that particular season. This show has gone through some ups and downs, some high highs and some very low lows, um, but I do believe overall it's one of the better uh, superhero television shows we've ever gotten. I mean, nowadays we're getting so much that uh, I, I think we kind of take it for granted when Arrow came out. There wasn't a lot. I mean, you had all the, you know, the 70s Wonder Woman and the 80s Hulk. You had uh, Smallville at that point um, and a couple of other little superhero shows sprinkled in there, but we never really had a definitive good, real live-action telling of a superhero show. And Arrow was the first one to kind of kick that door in, and now they're popping up all over the place. The Arrowverse has grown immensely, and of course we had the Netflix Marvel series for a while before Netflix canceled them. Um, and then now we have all these Disney Plus shows to look forward to. Uh, so it's a good time to be uh, a Marvel, DC, just superhero fan in general, especially as it concerns the television. Um... But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and rank them. My list might be a bit controversial. Um, not to say that the fan favorite seasons aren't very high on my list, but there's one there's one slot that some people might think is a little too high, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's get into it. Number seven, uh, season four. Uh, season four of Arrow is not good at all. Uh, I, uh, I detest this season. Uh, Damien Darth is not a good villain for this show. Uh, he's not a bad villain, but he doesn't fit Arrow. You bring in the magic and the mysticism, it just doesn't work. You know, um, he would have worked fine as a Flash villain. I think he worked great on Legends of Tomorrow when he was teaming up with uh, Malcolm Merlin and Reverse Flash, but he's just not an Arrow villain. Uh, I mean, and the whole the whole connection between him and the Arrow is well, he used to be in the League of Assassins, and so it's like that thin connection that kind of brings him to Star City, and it's a really bad season. Add on top of that, um, the way they treat characters, uh, Felicity and Oliver are just pounded into the mud this season. Um, the only character who uh, I can really stand for most of this season is uh, Diggle, um, but besides that, it's just very frustrating. Uh, Thea is very frustrating in this season. Um, it's it's just something I, I it's a very bad put together season, um, and it's definitely the low point of uh, Arrow. I think it's the lowest point the show got to. Others might disagree, um, but really, I mean, coming off season three, which a lot of people didn't like in general. This put an even worse taste in people's mouths about the show. This is where a lot of people stopped watching. Um, they undid the ending of season three in the first episode. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's not a good season at all. But let's move on to the next one. Number six, I have Arrow season six. Now, this comes off a very high point for the series. I mean, it was kind of resurrected in season five. And then season six just goes on a downer. Uh, not that I don't love Oliver being the mayor, because I think that's one of the, the cooler stories. Uh, but it's just that everything they did, they brought William in, which I'm fine with. You see that uh, this new dimension Oliver is a father, but um, a lot of it's played out and kind of corny. Um, you, uh, you add in a villain who is not strongly developed until the end of the the season, um, and Ricardo Diaz, who is a good villain, but it takes way too long for us to care, um, add in Laurel's flip, flip flopping, and it's like, okay, I, I don't care about this, um, and the biggest frustrating part of this season was the team split, half the team leaves, and we have Team Arrow versus Team New Arrow, and it just does not work, they're bickering to each other about trust, and it's just, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I don't know why we're doing this. It's so bad, and it just, it was not fun to watch. I understand you need some tension and some drama, but 
and I understand it's a CW show, but I did not like this at all, and I thought it was very badly put together, and it's just barely better than season four because the last few episodes really do get a little good when a team finally stops bickering at each other and everything. Um, but yeah, it was, overall, it's not a very good season. Uh, coming in at number five, I have season three. Uh, so, I like season three. A lot of people don't. The thing about it is, though, is that I think the first half of the season is very strong. I'll agree the second half goes down a lot. The first half of the season is very strong. And I love having Ra's al Ghul as the villain. I love it. I think it's perfectly. And nobody can say the episode where Ra's and fights and all the fight is bad. Uh, I mean, it's great. The weakest part of this season for me, uh, especially the second half, uh, is the flashbacks. I mean, I don't care at all about the flashbacks. Uh, the only cool thing the flashbacks do is bring back Tommy for an episode, which is cool. But besides that, it's just like I don't want, I don't care about China. I don't care about the storyline where he's going to China. Um, I rather him still be on the island personally, but uh, it was just a very, very underwhelming flashbacks. And then the second half of the season, there's really no Green Arrow. Um, you know, he's off doing the thing, trying to infiltrate the League of Assassins, and it's just. It's iffy. Uh, the finale is okay. Um, a lot of people hate the Oliver Felicity relationship. I like it when they do it right. Uh, and for some of this season, they do it right. Uh, they do eventually find a good a good pace for it in later seasons. But in season second half of season three, and especially in season four, it is very very badly done. And so I'm glad they finally found it it their way later down the road. But it's it's very bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it, season three is the nice middle ground between the good seasons and the bad seasons, I think. Um, so yeah, number five is Arrow season three. Number four is Arrow season one. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I love season one and it's a great origin story. It's a great introduction to Oliver Queen. It has, uh, some of the best flashbacks, some of the best present day stuff. You have Tommy as a regular, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, Malcolm Merlin is the villain, which is great. Not a whole lot of bad things to say about this season. Besides Thea, who gets on my nerves a lot uh, throughout the series, uh, but especially in season one where she's kind of mad at Oliver for disappearing for five years when it's really not his fault. Um, and she takes that out on him multiple times throughout the season and even into season two. And so it's very frustrating and annoying for that dynamic. Um, having Moira in the show is a great presence. She's a great kind of... She's not necessarily a villain, but she's definitely not on the side of good either. And uh, she's just a nice presence to always have around on the show. Um, it has one of the strongest finales of the series. The fact that the hero loses is something that would never happen in a, in a superhero TV show before this. But the ending of the, the season is he loses. I mean, yeah, he beats Malcolm Merlin in, in the hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Malcolm Merlin's plan goes off. He decimates the grades. And uh, he kills thousands of people in the process, including his own son, Tom. And it's just such a crazy up-and-down season. My biggest complaint is probably uh, uh, the relationship drama between... Uh, Oliver and uh, Laurel and Tommy. Of course, like I said, it's a CW show. You're going to have that relationship stuff. But it was just, I didn't, I wanted them to move away from that. I didn't think that was important. Um, I love Lance's intent of catching the arrow. It's kind of like Spider-Man and J. Jordan Jameson. He's just like, I hate this guy, you know. And uh, Lance is so good throughout this whole show. And uh, he does not get enough enough praise. Paul Blackthorne did a fantastic job for Clinton Lance. And I, and it was it, it was just such a good season and it was such a great way to launch this show. And uh, it it's it's what spawned everything. Uh, so yeah. All right, next number three, I have season seven. 
of this latest season. I really loved this season, especially the first nine episodes. The whole prison arc was amazing. The whole prison arc was amazing. There's a specific episode. Uh, I, I think it's the ninth episode. It's the last prison episode. It's where Oliver's going to get out and this huge riot breaks out. And Diaz breaks into the prison. and It's just off the walls crazy. It actually reminds me of an early episode of Prison Break. Uh, where there's a big riot in the prison. And it's just so freaking awesome. And you have Oliver, uh, Diaz going at each other. You have Bronze Tiger helping Oliver. Um, Oliver's, who was kind of his buddy in prison, Stanley. You see how psychotic he really is and what lengths he's willing to go to. And you see the demise of a couple of very, very big Arrow villains. Uh, Brick is one of them. And then... Uh, um, Crap, I can't remember his name, played by Cody Rhodes. Um, but uh, Samson, uh, you know, so they, they both die. Samson burns alive and Brick, Brick gets stabbed. So it's crazy to see that, you know, we've they've been around for a long time. Uh, but even moving past that, Ricardo Diaz, in the, who's in this first half of the season, is finally developed. I finally like this guy and care about him as a character. I won't say care about him because, you know, he's a bad guy, but, you know, I'm, I'm invested. Um, uh, and then the second half where they kind of join the SP SCPD to get, uh, via the vigilante laws. I think that's very clever. There's an episode of the show that's basically a documentary about vigilantes that's shot so well. Um, the, the flash forwards this season are some of the most entertaining, uh, of the series, uh, so far. Uh, I love where they went with Oliver's lineage, his kids. What happens with William? What happens with his daughter Mia, who is born at the end of the season? And it's just so, so good and so well done. And uh, it's a great send off to Emily Bett Rickards as uh, Felicity, because she will not be uh, returning for season 8. Although I do think she will appear in the finale. I think she'll be in the final episode. Uh, but she's definitely not going to be back as a regular, which is unfortunate, but you know, it happens. Um, uh, but all the characters in the show, uh, and this, especially in this season, thrive. The team was back together. Uh, Renee is one of my favorite characters. When he was first introduced, uh, introduced, I was iffy on him. But he turned me around very quickly by the end of season five. And I'm glad to see him sticking around in, in the role of the vigilante. Uh, my biggest problem with season seven is the villain, uh, Emiko Queen. Who, for the first half of the season, I'm really, I really was into it. And it just went off the rails in the second season, um, or the second half of the season. And, I mean, she's fine, I guess. She's a nice middle ground between some of the villains, but she is not as big as a threat as they want her to be, obviously. There's a line in there, I can't remember who says it, I think it might have been Diggle, who said, this is more personal than Adrian Chase or uh, Slade Wilson. And I'm like, that it is not at all. Uh, Emiko is nowhere near as threatening and it's just not as, you know, vile to the audience that this happened. They try to get some evil points on order by being like, oh, well, she could have saved Robert Queen, and she didn't. And it's like, yeah, well, Robert Queen was kind of a dick. Um, obviously, he doesn't deserve to die for that. But still, they, I just never really bought it. And, uh, you know, her redemption is played way too quick before she dies. And it's just not great but it's still overall very much enjoyed the show uh that's this season uh having colton haynes back as uh roy was fantastic i love roy harper he's a great character uh i hope he's in season eight i don't know if he's a regular for season eight again but we'll see uh but yeah that is my number three number two is arrow season two yeah, this is the controversy a lot of people have season two as their best and it's it's up there. It's and here's the thing. Uh, Deathstroke is my favorite favorite uh, supervillain of all time. So I had very high expectations going into the season because I knew he was going to be the main villain, and they delivered. And I love Deathstroke's arrow suit. It's just so awesome. And uh, the flashbacks are great. Um, and you really get a sense of what drove Slade mad. I mean, Oliver had to make a decision that was not easy, and uh, it got someone killed, which made Slade very mad, and he had the Mirakuru in him, and he goes on this witch hunt for his friend. It's a very personal thing, 
and you know we get to the present day and Slade's in Star City and he's he's kind of threatening Oliver. He shows up to Oliver's home, and then obviously eventually he kills Moira. He kills Moira Queen uh, right in front of Thea and Oliver, and it's it, that's one of the most iconic moments for Arrow is the death of Moira Queen. It's such a shock to the audience. It's such a pivotal moment for Oliver as a character. And you see really how far Slade has fallen. You know, we see him in the flashbacks, uh, and you know, he's he's a friend. He was friends with Oliver, they were brothers. And then everything that happens happens, they have this falling out and and he he bow, he bows he bows vengeance on Oliver Queen. He is going to uh, he's going to kill Oliver Queen. He's going to make him suffer the way that Shadow suffered. And add in Summer Glau, who's kind of like Deathstroke's sidekick. She plays both kind of this evil, corrupt businesswoman and obviously a supervillain. And then you have a Mirakuru army. And it's just absolutely off the walls. Insane. And it's such, such a good season. Uh, also, you bring in uh, Katie Lotz as a uh, white canary, uh, Sarah Lance, and it's just so, such a cool dy dynamic with her, and uh, you see her in the flashbacks as well, and uh, it, it's such, it's such well paced, it's such well put together, it's just so, so good, I, I can't say much bad about it, um, I really don't have anything bad about it, it's that good, uh, yeah, I don't have anything bad. It's just it's fantastic. And my number one uh, season of Arrow is Arrow Season 5. After the giant, giant disappointment that was Arrow Season 4, I was very worried. Going into Season 5, I was hoping it would be better. Uh, I, was, I was praying it would be better. It was very, very hard to get through Season 4. I didn't want to do, do that again. Uh, I actually decided not to binge this season and watch it as it aired because if it was bad, I didn't want to have to commit to binging. Uh, but it turned out to be such a great season. They introduced Prometheus, who's, a, who, who's an, a very interesting villain. And here's why I think he's not the best villain the show's ever had, but he's the best villain for Green Arrow. And that's because, you know, while Slade is a villain his villain journey is caused by Oliver's decision it was a decision Oliver made an impossible decision he made in a moment of weakness and there's nothing he really could have done someone was gonna die in that scenario no matter what there's nothing he could have done and he made that decision as Oliver Queen while he was on the island but with Prometheus Prometheus's journey into evil is because of Oliver Queen's action as the Green Arrow, as a hero. He's supposed to be a hero, and he killed this man's father. Now, yes, this man's father was corrupt and evil, but he still killed him in cold blood. And you remember in season one, Oliver, Oliver killed people. You know, he, he had no qualms about it. He would kill people if need be. And that came comes back to haunt him, you know, that his actions as a superhero, Something he did for the good of mankind is now coming back to haunt him, and not just him, but his city. And, you know, uh, the guy that plays Adrian Chase slash Prometheus is so good, because for the when he's introduced at the beginning of the series, I'm like, he's Prometheus. Like, that guy's Prometheus. But as the season, the first, I want to say, the 12 episodes go on, I'm convinced, you know, I fall in love with Adrian Chase, and I go, he's not, he's not Prometheus. He's a good guy. I am convinced that he is a good guy now. And I actually thought, you know what? I think he's a vigilante. Obviously, that turned out not to be true, but uh, that's what I thought. And then you get the great reveal where he, uh, where Prometheus fights vigilante and knocks him off the building. He takes off the mask. It's Adrian Chase, and he reports, he reports it in. Uh, and it's just go, it's mind-blowingly crazy. It's a nice reveal. You know, after they convince you that he is not the bad guy of the season and he turns out to be such a personal villain for Oliver um you also in this season you have the 
return Deathstroke, who uh, was in one episode in Season 3 that was not well received. Uh, and then he's absent from Season 4. And he comes back, and he is played by my new Bennett once again. And he is fantastic. He's on the side of good. Mirror Kuru's gone. He's coming to terms with who he is. And him and Oliver team up to save the day, obviously. Uh, some of the highest stakes. I mean, everyone gets captured, taken to the island. And, I mean, Adrian Chase is so psychotic. So crazy. Some of the stuff he does. He kills his wife in cold blood. He murders his wife to stop her from talking. He kills himself in order to blow up the island and all of Oliver's loved ones because he rather die than have Oliver be happy. That is insane. He rather his wife die than him get caught before he can complete his mission. Insane. He is. One of the best villains, masterfully played. Uh, everyone fires from all cylinders. The new team is great. Uh, my one complaint is, uh, I can't remember her name. She's one of the new recruits who then flips sides. Uh, she was in an episode of season four where she was trying to be like a new Black Canary. Artemis, that's her name. Uh, she was, her, her reasoning for turning on Oliver I thought was weak. Especially because she's joining a murderer. You know, I just thought... That's not really makes sense. Uh, I love the new additions, though. You have uh, Curtis, who was in season four, but was uh, just kind of a side character. He wasn't a hero. Has now become Mr. Terrific. You introduce uh, Rene Ramirez, who takes on the persona of Wild Dog, who, like I said, at first I, I didn't like him. I thought he was a hard ass, but I grew to like him. And now he's one of my favorite characters on the show. Um, you introduce Ragman, who is a very cool, interesting villain that uh, left halfway through the show, and we never really see it again until the documentary episode of Season 7. And then uh, you also add uh, a little ways into the series, Diamond Drake, who is the new Black Canary, who is very good at rounding out this cast, and she's fantastic. Uh, some of the training sequences in the early episodes, where Oliver is just schooling them all in the fight, is, uh, is very fun. Um, in Season 5, I just... I, it's It resurrected Arrow for me. Because after season four, I wasn't sure if this show could continue. I thought, you know, maybe its glory days are behind it. But Arrow season five really resurrected it for me. It reminded me why I loved Arrow, why I love this show, why I love this character. And, uh, you know, why I'm going to be sad when it eventually goes off the air, which we now know will be next season. Uh, and so I had, as much as I love season two... I had to give it the number one spot because overall, I think it's the best se season, and it was the one I was the most invested in. So what do you guys think? What is the best season of Arrow? What's the worst? Let me know down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.